What's going on YouTube? I am Darren, the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. We cover fashion, fragrance, we cover lifestyle uh, on this channel as well. So if any of those things are uh, topics that you would be interested in learning more about, I hope you would consider uh, taking a few moments just to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you do that, make sure you guys hit the bell icon as well. So that way, hopefully YouTube will notify you when I upload new content on my channel. So guys, on today's video, I'm gonna be taking a closer look uh, primarily at the house of Jerjoff. I wanna give you guys uh, my top 15 selections from the brand. And I'm also gonna introduce a new fragrance that I got sent by Twisted Lily called London Funk. I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about that fragrance before we jump into the my top 15 Jerjoff fragrances, but that's what we're getting into today. Now guys, the house of Jerjoff is one uh, that I've had interest in since I started collecting fragrances and pretty much uh, the fragrances that I have in my collection Which I think is about uh, 18 fragrances. Um, I pretty much have the The fragrances that I felt like I really wanted when I started collecting and as I at my collection have grown A lot of the fragrances from the house that really caught my interest that I've had um, an interest in acquiring for a while I think I pretty much have those now in my collection now, I'm not saying at all that I'm not gonna ever, you know, get any more fragrances from this house, but again, the initial ones that I had interest in, I have them, and I'm really gonna talk specifically about the top 15 from my collection, so this should be fun. If you wanna see what's on my list of the top 15 fragrances in my Jerjoff collection, and also hear a little bit about uh, this one from the house of Wilhelm Parfumery, then you guys know the routine, keep it locked right here. Fragrance guy. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. I'm enjoying some coffee today. If you guys have not seen my new bow tie fragrance guy mug, I love this thing. Uh, I may use this one more than my Kappa mug and my Polo mug now. Because I just think it's super dope to be able to enjoy a cup of coffee and see my mug on this mug. So that's pretty dope. So, really quickly, guys, the like I said, I want to talk to you a little bit about London Funk from Vil Wilhelm Parfumery. And I did uh, have this sent to me by Twisted Lily. Guys, Twisted Lily is a good site to not only buy full bottles, but to sample. Uh, a lot of these fragrances that I'm going to talk about today in my Jerjoff collection, of course, as well as London Funk, is available on Twisted Lily. And I'll make sure I link it and pin the comments. So if you want to go check out samples or bottles of anything I talk about, you can do so. But this one right here, man, this is a very interesting fragrance from Wilhelm Parfumery. Now, I will tell you who this fragrance is gonna be for. If you like Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Forever, or the other one that came out this year, Italian Love or something like that, I can't remember exactly the name of it, but you'll like this fragrance. If you love green herbal fragrances, spicy fragrances, you will love this fragrance. That's what this really reminds me of. It reminds me a lot of light blue forever because it's really it doesn't have grapefruit listed as a note it does have bergamot in this but the bergamot combined with the spices and that green undertone very strong green undertones in the opening of this fragrance are very reminiscent of that grapefruit opening that you get from light blue forever so you get bergamot you get uh, i think there's some cardamom and basil uh, in this so again very very spicy a very green opening of this fragrance combined with the bergamot and it gives off almost like that grapefruit vibe that you get from light blue forever now as it starts to dry down uh you get more of this kind of dry woody slightly earthy vibe from this fragrance but it's a really really solid fragrance again to me just because I know a lot of you have probably smell the Dolce & Gabbana fragrance, I will really, you know, just kind of lead you to that fragrance if you smell that. Because I know, of course, you guys can't smell through the camera. But if you smell that, this is the type of fragrance that you would really, really like. Um, because the opening does remind me a lot of that fragrance. 
So when it does dry down, I just want to tell you about some of the notes in it. You get like a driftwood. So it's, that's a very dry, woody uh, note with kind of salty accord, salty accord to it. And that's that why I think that comparison is coming in with light blue forever because it's a very salty fragrance as well. Uh, and you get some other woods in here, some sandalwood, some cedar wood uh, to kind of round it out. Uh, but again, very, very solid fragrance. So I'll make sure I link it down below if you want to check out London Funk from Wilhelm Perfumery over at Twisted Lily. All right, guys, now to my Jerjoff collection. I'm going to do a quick honorable mention. I do have two uh, Jerjoff fragrances that I didn't include on the list. Don't want to make it too long, but um, I'm just going to give you guys my top 15 with one quick honorable mention. The first one is Renaissance from the 1861 collection. Now, I really do like Renaissance, but it's a, it's a more of a, a citrus based kind of fragrance. It has a tea vibe to it, although tea is not listed, but it has tangerine, bergamot in the opening, a little bit of musk, uh, slightly ambery kind of nuance when it dries down. So really, really solid fragrance. But Jerjoff has some really creative stuff. And when I want something creative, it's not typically gonna be more of a citrus or petit grain kind of based fragrance like this one. It'll be more so, uh, something really creative. I like the fragrance houses like Jerjoff and Amwaj for really creative stuff. So sometimes they're more citrusy, um, more mass appealing type offerings aren't really the ones that I gravitate to the most for that house. But it's a really, really solid fragrance. So honorable mention definitely goes to this one from the uh, 1861 collection. This one is called Renaissance. All right guys, so in the 15th spot for me, and this is really hard because I really, I love all these fragrances honestly, but I put them in order for the sake of this video, but there are no slouches at all on this list. From the uh, Casamirati collection, this one is called Mephisto Gentuomo. One of my favorite bottles for sure, but this definitely gives you those uh, Creed Silver Mountain Water vibes. That's that same kind of inky metallic thing with the kind of tea vibe, uh, fresh citruses in the opening. This stuff is absolutely phenomenal, man. Great for uh, hot weather. Great for hot weather, just like Silver Mountain Water. Now, I, this one as well as the original Mephisto, uh, either one could work, but I just really gravitated towards this one because it's a little bit fresher. Oh man, and I actually, honestly, I like the bottle a little bit more. But if you're looking for something fresh, if you like fragrances like Creed Silver Mountain Water, then this is one that you will enjoy. Again, it's in the 15 spot, but I'm telling you, it ain't no slouch. But this one comes from the from the uh, Casamirati collection. And again, this one is called Mephisto Gentuomo. Dang, I might need to move this up. Dang, it's good. All right, guys, I'm coming in at the 14th spot on this list. This is a newer release from George Alpha. When I saw the, new, the note breakdown, I knew I would really enjoy this one. This one is called Decas. Decas, and this is from the, uh, also the 1861 collection. This is the last installment from that collection. Now, I must say this, of course, the 1861 collection has some absolute stunners in that lineup. This latest release being one of them. I love the contrast in the opening of this fragrance with the, the mandarin orange. How that really plays well off of that kind of slightly ashy, almost smoky kind of tobacco uh, that you pick up in this. Now when it starts to dry down, uh, you get more of a ambery kind of quality that comes into this fragrance because you're gonna get some benzoin as well as vanilla. And then it's rounded out really with a nice musk accord. This is an amazing fragrance. I also pick up, there's a little bit of booze in here as well from that bourbon. But this is an amazing fragrance. Again, haven't had this one as long, but it's a really, really solid release for from the 1861 collection. A nice addition to that whole lineup. 14 spot, man. One of the newest one, this is called Decas. All right, guys, now in the 13th spot, you know this list is good when this fragrance is in the 13th spot, but this one is called More Than Words. More Than Words. And like I said, guys, let, don't get it twisted. All these fragrances I love, but if I had to just put them in order, these are my personal favorites. Your mileage may vary. Uh, but this is a rose oud fragrance as a beautiful fruity uh, nuance in the opening of this fragrance as well that you get with the rose and the oud. And then when it starts to dry down, you start to get almost this smoky quality that's coming into play from Albinum. Ah, oh, this stuff is amazing. 
that's one of the things to me that really differentiates this from a lot of other rose oud fragrances is that fruitiness in the opening. I love it. Brings some balance to the typical smell that you get when you smell rose and oud together. I love this fragrance. And honestly, I should have put this one on my top rose oud fragrances instead of Water Cena, uh, but it was kind of hiding in the back and I forgot about it. So my bad. But this is an amazing rose oud fragrance from Jerjoff. I love it. This one is called More Than Words. All right, guys, I'm in the 12th spot in my Jerjoff collection. I'm going to go with this one right here from the Shooting Stars collection. And this is called La Capitale. La Capitale. Now, this one is in the uh, 12th spot. I love it. It does lean a little feminine to me. But not overly, not overly. I love the combination of notes in the opening of this fragrance, which consists of strawberry, caramel, and peach. Now again, so it's, it's a really sweet fragrance. If you don't like sweet fragrances, you won't buy it with this one. But this one right here, that strawberry note, is one that you don't really get to smell that often in fragrances, and it's so authentic smelling in this scent. Oh man, this is good. Like I said, it's just some powerhouses on this list. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Uh, but if you don't like sweeter fragrances, this may not be one that you would really uh, gravitate toward. But for me, it is so well done. The strawberry, peach, uh, caramel combination in this fragrance is just phenomenal. The accord that it creates is awesome. And then, of course, like a lot of other Jerdoff fragrances, there's a nice ambery kind of dry down to it with some bourbon vanilla and benzoin. Amazing fragrance, guys. So if you like those kind of fragrance notes, if you like your fragrances a little bit on the sweet side, if you like to try something that has a very interesting note of strawberry, then check out this one from George Off. This is called La Capital. All right, now in the 11th spot, this is a very popular fragrance. This is a lot of people's favorite. But again, I'm not as much into really sweet, sweet fragrances as much. It's great, and there's occasion for it, but this is a really sweet, fruity fragrance, and this one is called Herba. Herba Pure definitely in my top five bottles in their collection. Like I said, there's some other more creative scent DNAs than this one, but I do love it. It's a very fruity, playful, going out kind of fragrance, flirty kind of scent. Uh, this is probably out of all the ones in the collection, probably gonna get you the most attention and kind of compliments, but this stuff is absolutely phenomenal. If you like fruits, if you like a vanillic kind of sweetness, because that's really what this is about to me. Uh, a melange of citrus and fruit notes on the top, along with a nice, warm, kind of vanillic dry down. Amazing fragrance. This is the one that you will wear when you are going out. If you're going out to a bar or hanging out somewhere where there's gonna be a lot of folks, put this one on, you'll get a lot of attention. But it's in the 11 spot because we have a lot of bangers on this list. Check it out. This one is called Herba Pura. All right, guys, now we're getting into the top 10 and I'm gonna kick off the top 10 uh, with this one right here, man, Alexandria 2. Alexandria 2, and what I love about this one, I'm a huge lover of like apple cinnamon. This is an apple cinnamon fragrance. Oh my gosh. Like I said, this is, Zerjoff is one of those houses as well, just like Amwar, there's so many that just by what they are and how they smell, they could really be in the top five, but there's so many good fragrances from this brand. Apples and cinnamon, if you like it, you'll love this fragrance. I get great performance out of it. And the fall and winter, with fall and winter right around the corner, I'm gonna get a lot of usage out of this. This is so good. Apples and cinnamon heaven. Check it out, man. This one is called Alexandria 2. All right, guys, in the ninth spot, they did this fragrance in combination with rock star Tony Iommi, and this one is called Monkey Special. Monkey Special. Now, I, I, I said this the first time I talked about this fragrance. I'm not really a big fan of the name of this fragrance. Something about it just doesn't sit right with me. But I love the fragrance. Uh, it's really dark, um, boozy. Oh, man, you get this boozy opening. It's boozy, but it's got some spices in there, primarily cinnamon I pick up, with this nice fruity undertone, fruity, slightly tropical vibe that's coming from passion fruit. Oh my God, this is good. Listen, honestly guys, this, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just so hard when fragrances uh, from a brand are this good and you're doing a list like this. This stuff is phenomenal though. If you're talking about just what smells good, there's a lot going on in here, but it works. I'm um, gonna get you some cinnamon. 
some leather. You get some sweetness. I think there's tonka bean, there's caramel in this. There's a lot going on, but like I said, it all comes together to just work. This is phenomenal, man. This is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. You guys really need to check this out. If you like something that's kind of boozy, that's got that, that kind of spicy cinnamon thing going on with some fruity, a uh, little fruity background with some leather, check this thing out. It is a phenomenal fragrance. Again, this is called Monkey Special. All right, guys, now in the A spot, this next fragrance is one that I always refer to as a gourmand lover's dream. This one is called Italica. Italica. Now, this fragrance has gone undergone somewhat of a facelift. It no, it no longer has the velvety texture on the bottle, but it's still the same great fragrance. This thing is, oh my goodness. This will be high on the list, but when a fragrance is this sweet and decadent, it's just not one that you can get that me personally, I could wear as much on a daily basis, but my God, is it good. Oh my gosh. It's almond, there's this creaminess, like this sandalwood kind of milky uh, combination here with some toffee, vanilla. Like I said, if you love gourmand fragrances, this is just one that you have to put your nose on. I think it's actually a little bit more uh, accessible from a price standpoint now as well since they changed the bottle. It looks closer to the other bottles from the 1888 collection as far as the texture of the bottle. It no longer has the velvet on it, but this is amazing. Like I said, most of these fragrances, in my humble opinion, and most lists will be in a top two or three. Um, but because it's just the house itself, there's so many other great ones that I'm going to talk to you about in a moment. But this is the, the one for the gourmand lovers. This is called Italica. All right, now in the seventh spot, I absolutely love this one as well. Uh, another one from the Shooting Stars collection, man. This one is called Kobe. Kobe. And again, can't say enough good things about it. Um, this is one, you gotta love Neroli uh, to love this fragrance. This has a lot of Neroli in it, but it has Neroli, Petit Grain, and Orange Blossom. And that, all of those notes come from the same tree. Um, so you gotta be a fan of those kind of Neroli um orange blossom petit grain kind of fragrances but i i am and i love this stuff you have that really nice pronounced mandarin orange note in the opening to go along with the neroli the petit grain and the orange blossom and what i love is the contrast that is provided in this fragrance from uh a very um pronounced note of tonka bean so you get that sweetness and there's almost like a slight resinous quality that comes in this one as well from notes like styrax but this stuff is so good, very creative. And that's one of the things I look to this house for creativity. But this is a great one too. Guys, check that out if you haven't. This is one of those fragrances that, uh, when I talk about fragrances that you just have to get your nose on and smell, that's one of them. Again, that one is called Kopi. All right, now in the sixth spot, this is the best citrus-based fragrance from the house of Georgia. One of the best citrus-based summer fragrances in the entire world, in my opinion and it comes in at the sixth spot, and this is called Neo. Neo is in the sixth spot. This is also from the Shooting Stars collection. This is one that I always feature on my um, summer uh, niche list. It's really hard to leave this one off. Oh man, you get those nice bright citruses. It does resemble Kobe a little bit to me in the opening, just from that citrusy aspect, and they both have a very prominent note of Neroli. But this one goes a little bit more in a green direction. It has a very green undertone, very woody and green as it starts to dry down. But it's an amazing fragrance. Again, bright, citruses, uplifting, very vibrant, very lively fragrance. I love this stuff. Um, again, if you love citrus-based fragrances, one you gotta get your nose on. And it's in the six spot. Again, these top five, you'll see why. But it's, this, this definitely is not a slouch, man. This one is called Neo. All right, guys, in the fifth spot, because we're in the top five now, this fragrance right here is an amazing, spicy kind of sandalwood fragrance. If you like sandalwood, this is the one you gotta check out from the brand. This is called Richwood. Richwood, what a phenomenal fragrance this is. Again, spices, to me, spices and sandalwood, that's really what I get from it. I pick up a lot of spice, a lot of sandalwood. Again, you got some nice citrus in the opening uh, to kind of kind of neutralize some of the spiciness in this. 
but that's oh my god this is so good but that's what it really what it becomes about to me mostly about spices and sandalwood and when I look at the note breakdown, I'm not really sure where that kind of spiciness comes from actually in this fragrance, but I definitely get something that's really spicy in it. And I definitely get some, some patchouli as well. The patchouli here almost comes off not earthy, but more almost slightly chocolatey and gourmand to my nose. This is a phenomenal fragrance. And again, I wish I could pick up what that was that maybe a little bit spicy, almost tangy. Maybe that's coming from the black currant in this. Oh my gosh, but this is so good, guys. You got to check this one out. Again, um, not a lot of people talk about Richwood, but true connoisseurs know about this fragrance. So get your nose on this, especially if you like sandalwood. This one is called Richwood. All right, guys, and coming in at the fourth spot on this list, this is a masterpiece of a fragrance. From a complexity standpoint, as I always say, oftentimes when I discuss this fragrance, this one could teach a class on how a fragrance should develop. And this one is called 40 Knots. This is from the Join the Club collection. The bottle was gorgeous and the fragrance is absolutely gorgeous, guys. This one does a lot of different things. There's a lot of different nuances to this fragrance. It goes through a lot of changes. That's why it's so great for all seasons. It's got a very sea salty kind of aquatic vibe in the opening. And there's gonna be a point where it go, goes really floral. There's gonna be a point where it goes really dark, where you can wear this in the fall and winter as well. Like I said, it goes through, undergoes a lot of different changes. So there's really not the perfect season to wear this. And that creates some versatility to it. I mean, just about every adjective you, you can use to describe a fragrance, you could probably use to describe this scent. It's that good. My gosh, this is a masterpiece. This is a masterpiece. Get it in your life, guys. Again, this is from the Join the Club uh, collection, and this is called 40 Knots. All right, guys, now coming in at the number three spot on this list, it really hurts my heart that I can't have all the my top three all number one. <laughs> so let me say that first. But man, in the third spot, man, from the Chasm Erotic collection, this is 1888. 1888. I love this fragrance. I love this fragrance. I can sing its praises all day long and never get tired of it. This is, this is just so good. Uh, the nice floral opening, that's carnation. You get that carnation. It's floral. To me, carnation is almost, <clears throat> there's almost something creamy about it to me as well. And I love it. You get the carnation and spices. Nice, warm spices in this fragrance. You get some coriander in here. A lot of people talk about this root beer cord. It does. It does kind of resemble that. I don't know where that comes from when you look at the notes, but it does. You do get a root beer kind of a cord with this as well. And you get the spices. Mm. It dries down. You get some creaminess. Of course, there's going to be some sandalwood here. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of birch. So there's a slight smokiness from this. It has birch. It has saffron in it as well. This is just a masterpiece as well, honestly. This is one as well, as far as an experience, you gotta get your nose on this at some point. From the uh, Cosmorati collection, get your nose on this, guys. This is called 1888. All right, guys, now coming in at the number two spot, this is probably the most popular fragrance from the House of Jerjoff, and it's popular with good reason. This one is called Naxos. Also from the 1861 collection, this is an absolutely stunning fragrance. And I'm going to spray it and I'm going to talk about it. Cinnamon, tobacco, honey. This is so good, man. This is so good. It's got the cinnamon and the tobacco and honey combination in this fragrance. And that aspect of it is going to remind a lot of folks of um, Pure Havan. But the difference here, and I always talk about that when I discuss this fragrance, there's a very clean and calming nature that comes from a very prominent lavender note in this fragrance. And to me, that's the biggest differentiating note if you're going to compare this to Pure Havan. This is absolutely stunning. You guys know about this one more than likely, so I won't talk much about it, but it deserves to be at the top of a list like this. Um, again, you guys have heard about this one plenty of times, but if you haven't yet, for some reason, picked up this one, 
definitely get a sample of it. This is called Naxos. All right, guys, and last but not least, in the number one spot for me and my Jordoff collection, again, your mileage may vary. I would love to hear what your number one Jordoff fragrance is in your collection if you leave that comment down below. But for me, the number one Jordoff fragrance for me is this one right here, and it is called Pico Valladama. Pico Valladama. This is really about clean aldehydes, man. Clean aldehydes, soapy. Soapy clean aldehydes, a little bit of a floral hint uh, here as well. But I love the when it starts to get into some of the, some of the spices as it starts to dry down. Oh my gosh, this is so good. It is so fresh, such a fresh and clean fragrance. I love this stuff. So you get that freshness, you get that cleanness in here as well. And like I said, when it dries down, you start to get some spices that kicks in with musk. That's really the best way to describe this fragrance. But it's so good. Again, another one that you just gotta put your nose on. Like I said, I know these fragrances, most of the fragrances from this house are expensive. So again, go to Twisted Lily, get a sample. Try them out for yourself and see which ones may speak to you personally. But for me, this is my favorite from the entire house thus far. Again, this is called Pico Valladama. All right, guys, that's it. That's my time, man. I hope you enjoyed this video today as I gave you the top 15 fragrances from my Judge Off collection. As always, I sincerely appreciate your time and attention to these videos. You guys don't have to watch, but you do, and I sincerely appreciate that. Now, don't forget to take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you are sharing these videos out to some other folks that you think could use this information or find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darian. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good, and of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good, keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.